So welcome folks to our January 19th, um, 2022 teaching and learning call. Um, I've put the link um, in the chat for the etherpad and Adam is asking. Yeah, there is actually um, a teaching and learning page in the new confluence. We Links all got changed when we migrated. So um, we need to go to the new address. We put in a redirect, but I'm not sure if it's actually redirecting everything as intended yet. <laughs> so um, anyway, but that's the, the page with the links on it for the agenda and stuff. And um, you'll notice that, actually, let me do a screen share. see my screen now. Um, <clears throat> this is the teaching and learning page and you'll notice um, I've cleared out the older um, meetings. They're on this um, notes, recordings, and action items archive. So if you want to go back and catch a session that you missed, um, all of the recordings that we have, there were a few that, uh, actually one that didn't get recorded. It was just a Jirapalooza. Um, and a couple that got canceled, the meeting got canceled, so obviously we didn't have a recording there, but all the other recordings are, are up to date. Um, so I, I linked all of those up when I um, moved them off of the main page. So if you wanted to catch an earlier session that you weren't able to make, you can find them there. Um, but these are the ones for um, today and right now. Um, all right, so this is the Etherpad link. If you've not already signed in, please do. Um, and we'll start off with announcements. Um, one announcement is about the um, Sakai days that we had uh, previously um, scheduled tentatively for the um, 24th and 25th of this month. Um, we actually, I sent out a survey. I don't know if any of you guys filled it out, but I sent it out a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, the folks surveyed decided that um, it'd be better to have just a shorter PMC only um, meeting in January and hold off on Sakai days until March because it looks like um, it'll probably be early March before um, Sakai 22 is released. So um, we found in the past that a lot of the discussions and things that happen at, at Sakai Days or Sakai Camp um, get us kind of geared up and ready to, to work on the next big release, but they usually come at a time when we're still kind of pushing to get the current, you know, the one that's up on deck, the, you know, Sakai 22 in this case, um, get that one out. So kind of conflicting um, goals there. So we decided to try and wait a little bit until the um, the release is out the door and then have our meeting where we can focus more, um, more successfully on just the stuff that's kind of a little further out where we have more time for planning. So anyway, that's the, that's the idea. So the PMC meeting will be next week um, during that two hour time block, but we're only doing the one day two hours one day we're not doing the two day thing um we are still going to do sakai days with any additional ideas that people have planned if you put anything on the agenda for day two um i've kind of moved all that to march so uh so that will happen and it'll just happen a little bit later and we haven't picked the exact dates yet in march so um i'll probably be sending out some sort of a survey to to find the best days for people when, uh, when they can be available during that month. But um, anyway, that's, so that's the plan. PMC meeting next week, you're welcome to join us. Um, it's during the court call time slot. So uh, if you normally attend the court call, you can just attend that instead. Um, but even if you don't attend the court call, you're certainly welcome to join us for the PMC meeting. Um, all right, so any other announcements okay 
Um, all right, so I think we just have Jirapalooza on uh, the agenda for today because we didn't have a specific topic that anybody wanted to discuss. So um, we had cleared out all of the old um, Jiras that had been um, suggested by folks. We cleared those out at our first meeting this, this month. Um, so we've just got three on here. So if there are any others that you guys are particularly interested in, if you want to add them to the parking lot, um, please feel free to do so. Um, I'll go ahead and start with this first one from Tiffany. Brought up. And one's about. Okay, so. Um, assignments, accessibility, error reporting method in assignments is inaccessible and confusing. It's a long-standing issue that instructors are confused by the warning messages that appear when editing and saving changes to an assignment after the open date, after the due date, and after there are submissions or after grades are entered. So please include a screenshot. Um, this is, I think, the current our message and each message appears at the top of the page um, while the button that needs clicking is at the bottom of the page yes that is quite annoying <laughs> um, and then it has ambiguous instructions please make a correction and nobody knows what the original button is um, so let's see what she, in response to such a warning, people either assume it means it's impossible and they abandon changes or they fail to notice. So she's suggesting, wow, four fixes. First one is the warning message should be a pop-up that appears on saving the changes similar to the one in the grade book. So let's see what this is. Okay, so this is the an, an image of the pop-up in the grade book. So it would be so similar to that. Um, and let's see, make sure all the warning messages are easy to understand and meaningful. Make sure it's accessible so there's no focus trap. Um, specific affected field, uh, the user's keyboard should be placed within the affected field. So um, basically, if it's something about the date, it should you know, come to the date section. If it's, um, she's got several different conditions there. So uh, what do you guys think? I think all of that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, does anyone else have thoughts? I think all of it makes sense, Wilma. What is intimidating is if you read the activity, Chris Knapp on January 7th said that the end of the test plan said many, many more testing steps needed to be added. And mm -hmm. Tiffany responded at the end of her comment, uh, calling out you and Sean Foster, that the TL or UX group or a subset of their members should meet and propose text for each warning or error case that can trigger a message. So it seems as if, TL review of this ticket is going to have to have a tree for every error case and then propositions for what the text of that message should read. Yeah, that's a lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Way to pass the buck there, Tiffany. <laughs> Well, Tiffany did do a thorough job explaining <laughs> the JIRA and why there are issues with it. Mm -hmm. And from a programmer's perspective, it seems as if four uh, in the remediation plan or description seems to be the most difficult to address because if there is a specific affected field, the dialogue begins to be edited. She wants the UI to take you back to that field. So right. I don't know how complex that is from a programmatic perspective, but in terms of to make sure all warning error messages are easy to understand and meaningful, it's that 
which needs to be fleshed out. And we need to understand all of the warning and error messages possible before this can go to coding. Yeah, I'm wondering if the test plan is in depth enough to um, identify all those cases for us, or if it's just, as Chris notes, then we need many, many more test steps. It looks like Tiffany has, if you click on the history tab, mm -hmm. Tiffany has put in a whole bunch of stuff there. And I think that's what she wanted us to look at. Although the formatting is difficult to read. Thanks. Yeah, that is. Wow, oh, that's hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes my eyes cross looking at it. <laughs> um, well, you know what? She also um, indicated that UX should take a look at this. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to let UX look at it and see if maybe they do a better job of, of coming up with those error messages. Um, I agree in theory. What she's saying here sounds great, but it does need some additional work before it can be fixed. I mean, I agree wholeheartedly because yeah. I think that... So I'll put a comment to that effect, but I think um, we need probably like a, you know, a separate little task team to flesh out all the different error messages. I don't think we can do that on this call. Since um, Earl refactored assignments, would it be possible for him to give us a decision tree of the possible error cases? That's a great idea. We can ask him. Let me, um, let me mark that down as a... I mean, why reinvent the wheel if we can go to the code and get it from the code? And I realized that that decision tree may have changed since he last refactored assignments, but perhaps it would be close enough or get us most of the way there. By the way, Wilma, I don't want to derail Jira Palooza, but I did comment in comments that there is a main um, confluence page for Sakai Project, and it would be nice if at that landing page there was a link for TNL in the lower right sidebar for the working groups. There is on the landing page. Let me oh, there it is. It's under yeah. our teaching and it's, learning. Um, I, I'd almost put TNL in parentheses because you've got PMC, UX, QA, S2U, and I18N. So, visibly, oh, yeah, I can visibly, put I, TNL at the end if that would help. Visibly, I see, visibly, I didn't see it because I was looking for TNL. <laughs> ah, okay, well, that's an easy fix. I can add TNL to that link. So. Yeah, th thank you for compensating for my stupidity. <laughs> Um, it kind of blends because the, the Purio at the beginning might have masked the teaching and learning part of it. So I can I can fix that. Thank you. Um, all right. So I put the, that note on our notes. Um, I'll go back and, and uh, add a little note to the, the ticket itself in JIRA after our call. Um, but I do think we need to do a little more discovery on this. And like I said, it would be great if anybody um, wants to volunteer to help work on that, 
Uh, but I think we would probably need to set aside some time outside of this call to, to work up that list. Um, since, it, since we don't have many things scheduled for teaching and learning, perhaps it is something that we could take as a takeaway once we hear back from Earl and perhaps scope it for the future TNL or throw it to UX, see what UX has to say and see if we want to get a cross working group special session. Right. Yeah, that's a great idea because usually the two meetings follow each other. Um, there's a UX call right after this one. So potentially if we coordinated and wanted to work together. We would have a two hour time block to work out all the the different uh, possible warnings. Um, so on, yeah. on the of making assignments better. Yep, absolutely. So that's a great idea. So we definitely got some to do's there, but um, good progress on that. Oops. Okay. Um, anything else on that, Jira, before we move on to the next one? All right. So let's take a look at this one. Sean. Lessons student content. Let students have remove page option, which doesn't work. So um, let's see if the instructor adds student pages to lessons and the student creates a page, they also have the option visible to remove the page. But the remove page option doesn't work for students. Um, there's no console or server errors. This is not expected to work, then the option needs to be removed. If it is expected to work, then this is a bug and needs to be fixed. Um, oh, good, there's a video so we can see what's There's some audio here. I don't know if you guys are hearing it, but okay. not. Okay, I know you guys probably didn't hear the, the audio that went with that, but basically that was a student logged in. Um, you see the whole remove um, button and, uh, and you know, the warning message, and yes, you want to remove it, you confirm, but nothing gets removed. Um, so it looks like they're asking, should students be able to remove a page? And if so, um, how? Well, I think how would be the same way it, it normally is done, I would think. Um, or should the option be removed? So, okay, um, this is in student content. And I believe um, if there's not a page at all, um, student has to actually go in to start creating a page to make a yes. link there, correct? Yes. Yeah, so it seems like they should be able to just remove their page if they didn't mean to start it, you know? What do you guys think? I agree they should be able to delete it because they can remove every individual item that's on there. 
and reset it back to being a blank page. So I don't know why they wouldn't be able to use the remove page option to do it all in at once. Right. Although, if you remove the page, when you remove a, a lessons page as an instructor, you can, if you put it, put that page back, all the content comes back with it. Would that be the same behavior for a student removed page? I don't think the student pages are, are sort of stored the same way where you can restore it like you can a regular lessons page. That should um, probably they, be checked. Yeah. But they do um, they do get the confirmation. Like, are you sure you want to delete this? So I mean it's pretty obvious that they're I, I doubt that they would remove it by accident. They could change their mind <laughs> after they removed it, but I don't think they would accidentally remove it to begin with. And like Christina said, they, they can remove all the items on the page without any special protections. Those are gone forever once you delete them. I don't know if this is getting too far into the weeds, but I actually took a look at um, the rights for roles within lessons going to permissions, and there are only three. Um, it is lessonbuilder.read, lessonbuilder.cl, and lessonbuilder.update. So um, read is obvious, update is update all pages or items, and see all is see items regardless of release controls. So I think the issue is that um, deleting a page might require update all pages or items, which students wouldn't have. I think the the permissions on student pages specifically are different because students have authoring rights on their pages. Okay. It's a limited set of things that they can author, but they can still add and delete content on that page. So it's a different set of permissions that I don't think maps to the site permissions. Um, okay. Okay, Wilma, well, it looks like you're right. It does behave differently. I just did a quick test. Um, just from the instructor, I added a page as the instructor, because you can do that. Um, and I was able to remove that page. And when I added my own page back again, it was blank. So it doesn't look like content is saved when those pages are removed. I would still vote to give students the remove option if it's there because I mean I could see myself wanting to start a page and then maybe changing my mind and wanting to remove it so there's not just this blank page sitting there until I'm ready for my page to like be authored. Does that make sense? It does. All right, so just to get a sense of um, if we're all in agreement, if you think that students should have the ability to, to actually use the remove page button as it, it already shows up in their interface, it just doesn't work. 
So if you think that, that it should work, it should be able to remove a page. Put a plus one in the chat. And obviously, if you don't think community can put up a minus one. We asked that students could remove pages, but faculty should be able to restore them. We can ask. <laughs> the answer might be a no or, <laughs> um, you know, but we can we can certainly ask. I, I can put a comment to that effect. Um, but uh, I don't know what it's involved with involved because I don't actually know exactly how it stores it. I know it stores them differently because like, it's one of the things that doesn't copy over when you copy a course. Um, it obviously doesn't restore it even for the instructor. So it's definitely putting it in a different place. Um, but yeah, we can ask. All right, so <laughs> Christina says, no mercy, you click remove, you're gone. I don't know. I kind of agree. If you if you click remove and then it says, "Do you really want to remove?" and you click remove again, I think it's your fault if it's gone. <laughs> um, I, I, I suppose my only issue is I know instructors who've used student lessons pages as a gradable item, and mm -hmm. to have a graded artifact be able to be removed by the creator. Uh, that's a good point. That's a very good, and that might be why that it's a little tricky on the permission. Um, the, the other option would be to, would be to have the instructor have the ability to give permission for students to remove their own pages. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Of course, I don't know how difficult that would be, but in either case, though, I, I think the big issue is that it's showing up here. Um, hmm. <clears throat> forward a little bit and pause it. Okay, so they're just they're able to see it, which they shouldn't if it's not going to work. And right Correct. now, it's there; it's visible. It looks like it works, but it doesn't actually work. So that to me looks like a bug. Um, now the you know, whether it should work or not is a different question. Um, and I think why they kicked it over to, to teaching and learning. But um, maybe if it's related to a grade, if it's a graded item, then they can't remove it. There's a grade attached to it. And I don't know how difficult that would be, but it seems like um, maybe it should be grayed out or something if it's a graded thing where it's already had a score put next to it and then you can't remove it kind of thing. So I'm going to put a few notes on here. So really but to play devil's advocate a student could still remove all the content of the page that's true i mean unless we lock it down completely um they could still empty their page even though they can't remove it and even if you stop them from removing it, they can edit the text or anything to completely change it. So, yeah, I, I, I can, again, unless you wipe out whatever they have graded. Yeah, I think um, maybe the only way around that is to just sort of hide the area <laughs> where the student pages are so students can't get back to them. Um, and that way they can't add it on. But barring that, unless you lock down their authoring permissions at a certain point, um, there's 
going to be room for tank for some green and, and potentially messing up the graded. All right, sorry, I'm trying to type while my dog is trying to jump up on top of me. Hang on one second. I'm going to kick her out of the office. Oh. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so anything else that you'd like me to add to this one? Not sure I captured everything, but I th thought those were the two main pieces of information. I think that's fine. Yeah. Move on to the next one. This is another one from Sean. This is also lessons. Close this and I started auto playing in the background. I could hear the audio. <laughs> All right, so this one is also about student pages. Instructor adds student pages, student creates a page. Wait, is that the same one? I click on it twice. Oh, it's in there twice. Okay. So, there we go. All right. This one is also lessons. Um, student has empty advanced content items. Um, I wasn't sure if this should be a bug or a feature request. But when a student edits their content or their page, the advanced content items is empty. Um, we spent a little time chatting about this in triage. If that menu has no options, it sh that column shouldn't be shown. But we yeah. were also thinking some of the options in that column, like the question or the checklist. I can't imagine a, um, an issue with allowing the students to add those. Right. I mean, we certainly don't want students adding external tools to their pages because that could. Yeah, and they wouldn't. Problems, but. Probably wouldn't be able to, although, well, they might be able to grab server sides. That's been set up, but um, yeah, we wouldn't want them adding all types of advanced content. But um, what items are on there other than checklist, checklist, question, question comments, oh. student content, zip content from a zip file, and external tools? Okay, well, content from a zip file, maybe. I have a zip file of stuff they want to upload. Um, I can see add question. Yeah. And checklist, maybe. I mean, Oh, and they might want the comments tool. Were our comments controlled by the instructor? Is that an option that the instructor has? This one? That puts comments on the page, like at the, right. at the bottom. Um, 
the instructor can add comments to each page. Right. Okay, so they probably don't need that one. Um, they don't need student content or external tool. But they could potentially do checklist, question, and zip file. So I would vote for giving them those three options and leaving the, the block in there. Because there's already like a reduced number in the other blocks. What do you guys think? I think they should be included. Adam's saying zip file would be common cartridge, which might import or try to import to areas that the students may not have permission to do. I don't think it's common cartridge, not when you bring it in that way. You have to go in, um, you have to go through here to import common cartridge through more tools. My mistake, brain fart. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people use the zip file option to bring in stuff like from Articulate or, or some other program that packages several files into a zip. But, um, I mean, I could see students potentially having a project that they create in some kind of software that produces a zip file and it'd be easier to, to upload it that way if they wanted to. Um, So, okay, so what were the items again? Checklist. Question and file. Okay. I'll go back and comment on the Jira's later because I gotta log in and stuff and type it up better. <laughs> All right, any other thoughts on that one? All right. So let's move to our last one where somebody student today I believe and that is should the tool menu display long titles currently the left hand tool menu truncates long titles and displays dot 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 um, in previous versions the full title was displayed would it make, make sense to display the full title again now, we mod modified our code since 12 to display the full title but 20 caused the modification to break okay um Okay, so that's the untruncated, and that's the truncated version. I copied that one into the list just because that was another one we had debated about in triage a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. Hmm. You know, the, the upside of having the full name is you get to see exactly what their name, so you get the full meaning. Right. The downside is the multiple lines screws up the nice, pretty visual spacing. Yeah. Opinions? Do you, do you see the full title on mouse over? If I have anything long enough. Well, mouse over, you see like the title and the, the description of the tool, it looks like. So I, you would probably get the full thing. Um, you could use tool order to rename a tool. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so. I wonder what the maximum amount of text that can go there is. Ah. Oh, it stops you. Yes. In lessons, um, through the settings, 
at least on R21 server, it's letting me put in a very long title and it does show up on mouse over, although I don't know if it's screen reader accessible. Yeah, it stops here. Yeah. Yes, it gives I, it a I limit here, it. but if you go to the page itself, it, it, it lets you change it. Yeah. I don't know if it's dealing with proportional fonts differently, but uh, tool order allows you to set up to 20 characters, but the GUI in our case is only displaying 16. All right, so it does show up on mouse over. Um, I'm going to throw out something that may be really controversial and could just tick, kick this to the UX group. What about a resizable sidebar? Well, you can already collapse it. Right, but you cannot change its spacing. Right, so you mean if, one that you can make really wide? Yep. I would think if we did something like that, it would have to be admin controlled by something like a property. I would not want to give instructors that power. Simply out of fear they'd do something stupid. <laughs> well, if it's on a user by user basis, doing something stupid would be collapsing it and then you'd have to present the expand. So I, I, I can see an instructor trying to have their left menu be half the screen. Maybe they like it that way. <laughs> and I realize <laughs> that is stupid, but. It, it would work if it was a user by user thing and not like a in, instructor being able to set it for a course and that is how it shows up for all students. Yes, well, collapsing is a user by user thing. So what I'm saying is resizing the sidebar would be no different. And then you would concatenate long titles unless the size of the sidebar allowed for its full display. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for personalization. I just, I don't know if there's a really a good argument for someone other than seeing a whole bunch of really long titles in their entirety. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. <laughs> it would shrink your content area. Although I guess if you have a really huge landscape monitor, it wouldn't matter. I don't know. I think the final choice should just be between either keeping it the way it is or letting it be wrapped around to take up two or three lines if need be. Yeah. I think making it resizable is um, it's probably an enhancement that nobody's really asking for. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, like if, if somebody was making an argument for I want to do it this way because I like my screen this way and my students like their screen went this way, then at least there's people lobbying for it. But I don't well, know. I, I mean, I'm just saying that the menu bar, which yeah. in prior versions hasn't been called a menu bar, but it's been called the sites tray or other things that is dynamic, but the sidebar is not. I mean, the sites up here. Correct. Well, so it's, it's still uh, not resizable by the user. It's It'll resized. wrap. It, 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 it will wrap as you resize the browser window. But I see what you're saying. It's not. Yeah, but resizable. I can't make this like half my screen. Right. I can I can add more courses and it'll wrap to another line. Um, but I can't like just make it really, really wide or disappear altogether. I don't know, I think it adds complexity that we maybe don't need right now. I think 
truncating titles is funny. Yeah, I think I'm going to come down on the truncate side because I think wrapping the titles encourages people to make really long titles, which is not the best user experience. So if we can gently discourage people from doing things that are ugly, then we should. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is I just literally went to administration workspace and there are four tools with truncate titles out of the box. <laughs> Email template administration, statistics management, academic term manager, and mm -hmm. message bundle manager. <laughs> yeah. So long titles for tools are yucky anyway, so I think we should probably discourage people from making them any longer than they need to be. That's my opinion. Brevity is the soul of wit. <laughs> All right, so Christina, before you jump off, or unless she already has, or maybe already has. I think she was in the short titles camp, right? Yes. Does anybody want to disagree with that? I put that we decided that, that shorter titles was, was better on the whole. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, so those are all of our JIRAs for today. We don't have any more. We've only got about 10 minutes left, so. We've used most of our hour. Um, we do have a couple of uh, meetings coming up that we don't have topics for. So I don't know if any of you would like to propose a topic that we talk about. Um, potentially, we might be using some one of those dates to do some of the work around that, uh, that JIRA that Tiffany proposed. Um, but if there's another topic that you guys would like to dive into, we certainly don't have to stick to just JIRAs. Um, we can just pick something for discussion and just talk about it. Or we can have somebody come in and present on something. If there's a, a presentation or maybe like one of the lightning talks that you saw at the virtual conference or elsewhere that you'd like to get somebody to come and do kind of a, a reprise uh, performance and um, maybe go a little more in depth about a particular topic, that would work too. So does anybody have any thoughts at the moment of things that they might like to um, put on the agenda for February? No thoughts at the moment. I'm trying to think as little as possible with the beginning of the semester. I know sometimes start of term is not the best time to come up with new and inventive things. Well, if you think of anything between now and February 2nd, um, let me or Charles know, and we'd be happy to put it on the agenda for that date. And, and I'll try to think of something too, if, if I can look at some of the, um, maybe the lightning talk presentations, maybe we can get somebody to come in and present a little bit more about their topic or something along those lines. So um, that will be our next meeting um, on the 2nd. And hopefully I will see you guys and maybe a few more folks um, on that date. So have a, a great rest of your week and we'll see you next month. Thank you, Wilma. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye.